Hi, I am Mamadou and I am attending the last year of the scientific English school in Tuscania. Today I would like to do an experiment related to the Etruscan script. The Etruscan language derived from the Greek alphabet. Its main characteristic is that the Etruscan wrote them from right to left. The numbers are similar to the Romans one, but they wrote them upside down. Now let's go back to the Etruscan writing with my teacher Marielle Gentile and try to read uh, some words together. Hi, hi Mariella Gentile, hi my art teacher. Now I'll show you um, the Etruscan alphabet. The Etruscan don't uh, didn't have all the letters in the alphabet, but for example, they uh, didn't have the letter C. They use the letter P for the similar sound. This is the sound of the Etruscan, of the Etruscan letter P. The same for letter D. They use, they use the T and H, and this is the Etruscan symbol. Then they do, didn't use letter G, they use C and H, and this is the symbol. They didn't have O, they use U. This is a Etruscan alphabet. You can <coughs> see the A, C, E, F, H, K, Hi, Hell, Ham, M, P, H, S, T, U, D, uh, Z, F, T, T, H, and we have. All right, okay. We have some problem. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Let them. That's all. I think they'll sort it out. In right. In the meantime, let me give you the. This moment, yeah. we we haven't it's seen. Enough. We can't see all the connection. We have a connection. I don't know if they are online. Um, so just can you write you if you are online, please? We have a little problem with internet, technical problem. Leonardo. Technician, engineer, work for us. It's okay. We are online. Okay. I said before that this is my name in Etruscan. Mariella, the Etruscan, right from right to left. And for example, I have the same name in Etruscan for Mamadou. And now I'd like to, to write in Etruscan a name like Ashley. Ashley, this is for you. Ashley, please give me your attention. Okay, Ashley, this is your name in Etruscan language. Thank you. This is for... <laughs> for me. This is Ashley in Etruscan language. Okay. Uh, according to this lesson, at home, try to write your name in Etruscan as on our assignment. So, let's leave our city, our town. Ah, oh, okay. Right, just a moment. This is Ashley. This is for you in Etruscan. When you come in Italy, this is your name. Oh, lovely. Thank you. Yeah, right. 
<laughs> okay, so let's leave oh. our town and go to the eternal city, Rome, with Andrea Bocci again. Bye. Leaving one hour drive from Rome, we couldn't avoid taking you to the eternal city, where Roman history passes through its squares. Piazza Hispania, in English known as Spanish Steps, is one of the most uh, famous pictures of Rome. The square takes its name from the Embassy of Spain. In the middle of the square, there is a fountain uh, by Bernini, built in memory of the flood of the Tiber River. It is the art of shopping. The small square that hosts Fontana di Trevi is one of the most visited areas by tourists from all over the world uh, who come here to take a souvenir photo and to perform the inevitable coin toss celebrated in the famous film La Dolce Vita by Federico Fellini. The square Piazza del Popolo, of elegant elliptical shape, is in a neoclassical style. In the middle, one of the biggest Roman obelisks rises. Obelisk Flaminio. Piazza Venezia joins Via dei Fori Imperiali with Via del Corso, two of the most famous streets in Rome. Majestic stands the imposing national monument of Vittorio Emanuele II and the corpse of Milite Ignoto, in English unknown soldier. And for this reason, the monument is also called Altare della Patria. In the past, Campo de Fiori Square was used for capital executions. And here is the big bronze statue of the philosopher Giordano Bruno, sentenced to death for heresy and burned alive. Today is the square of Roman nightlife. What night tourists and students meet to have drink or eat carbonara. And now I lead the world to... Uh, Piazza Navona is the main baroque square in Rome and it occupies the space of the ancient stadium of Domitian. In the Middle Ages, uh, the square became a meeting point for feasts and fruit and vegetable market and nowadays it is hosting the headquarters of the Brazilian Embassy. Uh, Pope Innocent X commissioned uh, the wonderful fountain uh, to the um, most important artist of his period, Gian Lorenzo Bernini. The fountain uh, has then become the symbol of uh, Piazza Navona. Uh, four white marble statues uh, represented uh, the um, uh, four biggest rivers known, uh, the Nile, Ganges, Rio de la Plata, and Danube. Uh, the Nile has a veiled head uh, as its springs were still unknown. Uh, the Ganges is representing did uh, with uh, an old man with a um, uh, walking stick uh, as it uh, uh, represent uh, the um, that the river was naviga easily navigable uh, the rio de la plata is near a fantastic animal uh, because of the discovery of the new world and finally the danube has a horse next to him as it represents uh, the old continent that is europe and now i leave the share to so now let's go through the core of the Eternal City. Uh, let's go through the Pantheon. The Pantheon, which name means the Temple of All Gods, is a building located in the ancient Rome, which was devoted to all the divinities. The square in front of the temple is called the Piazza della Rotonda. And last year, for example, the Pantheon was visited by over 6 million people. The Pantheon is also the most beautiful temple of the Imperial Roman Age, and its dome is the masterpiece of the Roman technique, which is also the secret for his 2000 years of history. The dome has a 43 meters diameter, which is also the, me the measure of the length of the building. And thanks to these perfections, in the measures, we can say that the Pantheon contains an ideal sphere. Inside of it, you can feel like levitating. Uh, looking up, we can see five rings and 28 coffers. 28 is a symbolic number for Pantheon. Indeed, for mathematicians, it represents the perfection, 
while for Archides it represents the divine. Now let's go through another part of Rome with Altea.